Hey guys, and welcome back to another Arma 3 video. Before we get into this one, I'm going to make the spoiler warning announcement now. You are heading directly into spoiler territory for the entire Arma 3 campaign and some of its DLC, so if you haven't played it and don't want the storyline ruined, turn back now. You have been warned. Are they gone? Okay, for you chads that are still with me, let's do this. Captain Scott Miller, a name whose reverence is matched only by its ambiguity. Captain Miller is one of the main characters in the Arma 3 core campaign and is a major player in both the Apex Protocol and Old Man campaigns. Captain Miller is a man who knows the value of information and under his various layers of subterfuge lies a core value set that is solely centered around the greater good. These ideals will be evident multiple times throughout his exploits and will cause him to clash with his subordinates, who fail to see the bigger picture as the constant power shifts drive one to question just whose side Captain Miller is actually on. Born in the United Kingdom on the 22nd of June 1992, Miller's early career is largely shrouded in mystery. What is known is that as of 2035, he is the second in command of the Combat Technology Research Group 1-4, a multinational NATO-led black ops group based in the islands of Altus and Stratus, and later in the Tanoa region of the Horizon Islands. Canonically, we're first introduced to the captain at the beginning of the Eastwind campaign when he and three other members of CTRG 1-4 infiltrated Stratus on the outset of the AAF hostilities posing as Royal Navy Special Forces officers. Prior to this, Miller and his team spent five years embedded with the Freedom and the Independence Army, smuggling small arms and equipment to the faction. These actions are not seen during the campaign, but it is evident that Miller has his hands in more than he lets on due to all his mysterious contacts. Captain Miller's origin and true intentions are constantly unclear to Sergeant Conway, Corporal Carey, and the surviving NATO forces, but facing no other option, they are forced to accept Miller's command and guidance in order to survive. It isn't until Miller orders the destruction of Air Station Mike 26, the only communication center with equipment powerful enough to call for NATO support, that Corporal Carey begins seriously questioning Miller and his team's actions. At this stage in the operation, it is unclear whether or not any reinforcements are coming at all, so destroying the only communications array raised a couple eyebrows amongst the survivors, especially considering Carey knew they had a tactical advantage by entrenching their position against AAF reinforcements. In reality, it was Captain Miller who did not want NATO reinforcements interfering with his team's covert efforts to find and retrieve the CSAT seismic weapon of mass destruction known as Project Eastwind a weapon of mass destruction that went widely unknown to NATO forces stationed on Stratus at this time. This weapon has the potential to cause massive underwater seismic activity, resulting in devastating tsunamis that would kill most if not all innocent inhabitants on the islands of the Mediterranean as well as the Horizon Islands and the Pacific, shifting the balance of power well into CSAT's hands. Miller hides his underlying intentions by playing both sides of the conflict. By manipulating the opening course of the war, he and his team ensured that government officials seeing this conflict from the outside looking in would be none the wiser. This allowed Miller to continue his covert operations under the guise of trying to stop the CSAT aggression against NATO in the Mediterranean while secretly working to stop a larger conflict from escalating. Miller knew about the Eastwind device after having tracked its development for years, and nothing was going to stand in the way of him stopping CSAT, not even those he would grow to call his allies. It is rumored, but not confirmed, that prior to the Eastwind incident itself, Captain Miller was allegedly involved in the destruction of Oreo Castro on Altus, an act that is largely considered the catalyst Miller needed to again ignite the flames of war, sparking the uprising of the Freedom and Independence Army against the hardline Altian government and their CSAT puppet masters, actions that would eventually lead us to the beginning of the Arma 3 campaign. Again, however, Miller's involvement is purely speculation, though there has been evidence discovered in the aftermath that could possibly suggest otherwise. Fast forward again to the Eastwind Incident of 2035. 
Captain Miller, never actually leading a combat mission himself, coordinates actions and helps the NATO remnants fight their way through AEF hostilities. During these combat actions, Miller's team, callsign Delta, are always sent on mysterious alternate missions. Yet Corporal Carey and the NATO troops continue to come out on top. However, when a planned meetup and resupply with FIA supply runner Nikos goes awry, Camp Maxwell is bombarded and multiple remaining NATO troops are killed or wounded. Following these two critical blows to remnant forces, Captain Miller somehow raises NATO Medcom on the radio and sends for reinforcements, but the NATO survivors would first need to secure a beachhead at Ahia Marina in order for the follow-on forces to be established. This news emboldened the now waning NATO survivors while simultaneously confusing them as to how exactly contact was made considering the destruction of Mike 26, further shrouding Miller's actions in secrecy. Of course, these claims were false. Miller had not raised Metcom and no NATO reinforcements were en route. Captain Miller had already secured he and his team's passage off the island, and was counting on the surviving NATO forces to be wiped out by the AAF and CSAT reinforced garrison Corporal Carey and the rest of NATO was about to attack. However, the attack goes better than expected, and Carey and the NATO survivors are able to link up with Miller at his retrieval boats. While exfiltrating, however, a flight of AAF attack jets spot and eliminate the fling boats, leading us to our next chapter. Following the aerial attack on the boats, Corporal Carey miraculously washed up on the shores of Altus near the town of Ahilahori. Unfortunately, Miller would lose one of his own, Sergeant Hardy, whom Carey would relay the loss of over his radio as Carey searched the beach for equipment and other survivors. Captain Miller would begin using his FIA contacts and forged relationships to continue the search for the Eastwind device on Altus. Miller would coordinate attacks with a resistance leader, Costa Stavro, which preoccupied the suspicious Corporal Carey while sending his team to search for the device into the eastern parts of Altus. It would be determined that CSAT was far too entrenched for his team to continue searching, so Miller would have them withdraw back to the west to come up with a new plan. Following the capture of a defecting AAF officer, Miller learns that Nikos, their supply liaison and lifeline, was being held back on Stratus. Miller personally led the sneak attack to recover his contact that was critical to his efforts on Altus. Shortly after arriving back at Altus, following a successful rescue of Nikos, Captain Miller learns of a planned NATO invasion of Altus by the 111th Infantry Division. Miller knew that this would scare away CSAT and his chances of finding the Eastwind device would go with them. So Miller sabotaged the invasion by falsifying intel that the main airport was heavily unguarded and that a majority of AAF and CSAT presence was concentrated in the west of the island. Upon the 111th's arrival, they were initially beaten back, and in the chaos of the fighting, Stavro and a good portion of the FIA guerrillas were mistakenly ID'd as hostile by NATO attack helicopters and eliminated, despite being under the impression that they were assisting the NATO forces in capturing the objective. Following the botched invasion, Captain Miller and his team would disappear as Corporal Carey was reunited with NATO forces. Carey was in for a stern realization when he was debriefed that NATO Commander Colonel David Armstrong had never been in contact with Captain Miller and that Miller and his team were now to be considered hostile. This drives Carey to question everything, as all of his actions, all of his friends lost up to that point, had seemingly been for nothing, and he wanted answers. But canonically, we would never receive them from the man who owed them. After departing Altus and Stratus, Captain Miller, now going by his call sign Keystone, is reassigned to the Horizon Islands following the unsuccessful attempt to capture the Eastwind device on Altus. Tracking rumors and intel on it to the island of Tanoa, Miller operates undercover unbeknownst to the other CTRG team number 15 conducting clandestine ops in the area under the guise of a NATO exercise. While CTRG 15 works to hunt and kill the syndicate crime lord known as Warlock, they begin receiving coded transmissions directly to their display visors while in the field, the source of which is Captain Miller, who himself is captured by the Syndicate while spying on their main hub of operations. Team 1-5 then finds themselves on the defensive as a team of hostile special forces begin engaging. 
1-5 barely makes it through the barrage and is given the location of Keystone, who immediately launch a nighttime raid to rescue Keystone, who now has critical intel on the whereabouts of the Eastern device and the origin of the hostile special forces known as Viper Team. The Viper Team is a Chinese CSAT group that focuses primarily on destabilizing regions and acts as one of the key tenants to CSAT's Apex protocol procedures, the other being the Eastwind device itself and economic subterfuge. After chasing the leads provided, Captain Miller leads CTRG-15 on a mission to kill Warlock and capture the Eastwind device. As Miller and Team 15 draw closer to the device, CSAT launches a last-ditch effort to recapture the device before it's disarmed. At this moment, Miller CTRG-14 reappears via Ghost Hawk and lands to assist. The defense of the device is successful, as is the disarmament. A CH-67 Huron arrives to lift the device away and out of the AOR. This successful mission simultaneously ousts the CSAT operations in the area, which garners an immediate condemnation response from NATO and other worldwide entities. The world is brought back from the brink of devastation thanks to Captain Miller and both CTRG teams 1-4 and 1-5. Three years pass. The year is now 2038, and NATO has all but abandoned the Horizon Islands following the conclusion of Exercise Safe Horizon. Seeing an opportunity, CSAT sweeps in to capitalize on the situation with the help of the new pro-CSAT Democratic Party. This sudden shift in political posture, coupled with the outbreak of a new malaria superstrain, raises Miller's suspicions of further CSAT involvement in the area. The disease is known to kill only ethnic Tanoans and less harmful to non-Tanoan residents. Miller had his suspicions that the disease was artificially created and deployed against the Tanoan people as another CSAT attempt to destabilize the region and causing an already weakened NATO to respond by deploying forces that could otherwise be utilized elsewhere. But Miller had to be certain, and he needed proof. CTRG greenlights Operation Tarnum with Miller in command of the investigation, but with no current NATO support, CTRG is left up to its own devices to get the facts and quell the situation. Luckily, a retired French Foreign Legionnaire named Santiago is based in Tanoa and is able to handle much of the required grunt work to bring CSAT's perverse activities to light. Miller, having set up a small command post deep in the jungle, tasks Santiago to carry out reconnaissance missions spying on the so-called CSAT health clinic. Trucks with strange red markings are recorded driving overnight to Luganville, which coincidentally suffered a massive outbreak just hours after the truck's arrival. Over the coming days, Miller worked with Santiago to begin peeling back the layers of subterfuge and eventually discovered that he was right on the money yet again. The virus, known as Atrox, was indeed artificially developed, being the pride of CSAT biochemical engineers. Worse over, CSAT was producing the only known counteragent to Atrox. The virus was spread by infected mosquitoes and was to be tested on Tanoa before possible further deployment elsewhere in the world. This could not be allowed, and Miller would stop at nothing to see CSAT's heinous activity thwarted. Eventually, with Santiago's help, Captain Miller would seize an opportunity to acquire a small sample of the counteragent. Santiago was reluctant to give up on the counteragent due to his friends and neighbors needing it, but Miller would remind him, and us, to keep their sights on the bigger picture. The world would need this counteragent should Aatrox be deployed by CSAT, and giving up what little bit they had to cure the very few individuals on the island was not something Miller would allow. With the counteragent recovered, Operation Tarnum was considered a success. As a result of CTRG's success, CSAT's activities were leaked to media outlets worldwide to near universal outrage and backlash. This would undoubtedly be the final nail in the crumbling coalition's coffin as the world quickly condemned the atrocities performed by CSAT. All made possible thanks to the unwavering dedication to the bigger picture by Captain Scott Miller. Well guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this lore video. If you're still here and you clearly didn't heed my spoiler warnings at the beginning, so you only have yourself to blame for any unnecessary butthurt. 
I'd like to thank my amazing patrons for their support of me and my channel. It really means the world to me, guys, so thank you. If you're interested in becoming one of these absolute chads, the link is down in the video's description. I'd also like to thank you, the viewer, for watching, subscribing, and commenting as it really helps my channel grow. We've recently hit an amazing milestone of 25,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for your continued dedication to me, and I'd like to extend a heartfelt welcome to all new subscribers to the channel. More lore and modless videos are on the horizon, so stay tuned for those. Thank you all again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.